Okay. Hello, guys. I hope you you hear me well. I'm sorry, my voice is a little bit um, because of the party last night. So I'll try to do my best to give a uh, to give this talk. So today, yes, we are going to talk about the Google Play billing. <coughs> so as usual, a slide about me. So I'm a senior penetration tester at Rondrisec. Uh, it's an offensive security company based in uh, in Paris. I have a lot of experience in uh, penetration testing in uh, different areas, such as Windows, Linux web application, Wi-Fi, and of course Android. Um, I'm also the member, a member of the Checkmarks application security research team. I don't know if you know this team, but uh, one of the famous things uh, this team performed is about uh, research uh, regarding Tinder, the Tinder application. Uh, so yes, if you want to, to dig more, uh, you can look at the, the blog. Uh, I am also a core security researcher at Cobalt, and I like playing CTF. But for Hack in Paris, I didn't get time to to play a lot. <coughs> so let's start. I'm going to present you briefly what is a Google Play billing. Uh, present also some known vulnerabilities about this API. Show you how I exploited these issues on uh, several applications and uh, also some st some results about my my research maybe before to start how many people are uh, are using an android device okay so many people and how many people are already perform the uh, in-app payment using their device okay i guess mostly for games no yes no no okay <coughs> So let's have a look at the Google Play billing. So if you look at the Android documentation, the Google Play billing is a service that lets you sell digital content on Android. So yes, it's a good framework for, for, for developers because you can use it for in-app purchases, but also for subscriptions. So for instance, to magazines or to have some premium features if you want to remove advertisement on your Android application, or uh, like, uh, more specifically in Android games, to have some extra content. Uh, for instance, okay, Fortnite is not a good, uh, good example because uh, uh, they are not using the Google Play Store uh, to publish the, uh, the application, but you get the idea if you want to buy some stuff on Fortnite, uh, if, you, if uh, Epic Games wanted, they can use the uh, Google Play billing API. Another advantage is that the payment is completely handled by Google. So for, the, for developers, it means they don't have to handle with credit cards, uh, tracking, uh, track the, the transactions, and uh, so it's, it's easy for her to, to, to implement this API. Um, you just need to define the products on the Google Play console. So you say, okay, I'm on this application, I'm going to sell uh, this kind of product or this kind of subscri subscription, the price for each product, of course, and that's all. And the only requirement on the u user, you need to have Google Play installed on your device, which is normally the case if you are not, uh, if you are, if you have not rooted your 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 device. So yes, if you look at this schema, just to have more uh, an understanding. So on, in orange here, you have your application. You just need to embed the Google Play billing library in your application. And then you have two main, uh, imp two important uh, components. As we said before, the Google Play app, which uh, with uh, the application, your application is going to, to talk about uh, with, sorry, and the Google Play backend. So in, fa in fact, when you start the, the process of in-app payment, your application is going to send a message to the Google Play app saying, okay, this user wants to buy uh, this specific product. And then the Google Play app is going to send requests to the backend uh, for, uh, for, uh, for validating, I mean, no, for, sorry, for handling the process payment. Uh, so yes, the backend is not used only for that, but also to retrieve the product list that your app, that your app is uh, selling, and also for uh, tracking the transaction. 
For instance, uh, you can imagine you are uh, buying a magazine. If you already uh, buy it, you can retrieve it uh, without buy buying it again. And then optionally, uh, the developer's app can have a server to perform the payment validation or to deliver the product. If uh, it's not, uh, if you need to deliver the product wi with a, a third party. So, just to, if you never use it, uh, it, it, it is something like that. So, and this example is a trivial drive uh, application provided by Google and the documentation. So, if you click buy, here for instance, in fact, you have kind of a pop up saying, okay, do you want the, to buy this product? The price is this, and you just need to click buy, and then the payment uh, method uh, is asked. So if you pay by credit card or a voucher code or something else. So in fact, this pop-up is already the Google Play app. In fact, when you see this pop-up, you are kind of not anymore on your, on your Android application. And so if the payment goes well and is su successful, then you go, go, go back to your application and then uh, your application needs to handle this, this, um, this successful payment to deliver the, the product. So let's, let's have a look deeper on what Google is uh, giving to, to the application. In fact, it's just a JSON object containing uh, several values, but the most interesting one is a purchase state, which indicates if the payment was successful or not. So you have only two possible values, uh, zero for purchase or one if the user cancels uh, the payment. A purchase token, it's, it's uh, just a token used to identify the transaction for the tracking. And a signature. In fact, this, uh, this string represents the signature of all the JSON objects returned by, uh, by, uh, by Google. So, for sure, the idea is uh, for the developer to ensure that the signature returned by, uh, by Google Play uh, backend is a good one. So, yes, to do that, you need just to generate an RSA keeper for each application you are going to, to use a Google Play billing. And, uh, yes, a private key is used to, to perform the signature. So if you look at the code of the Trivial Drive uh, V2, which is again the sample application provided by Google, uh, you can see how the verification is, is performed. Uh, so yes, it's, yeah, no, it's good. So you have a verify purchase function, and uh, yes, you have uh, some, uh, some, um, some verification to see if uh, the signature is empty, and uh, with the public key, uh, the, the signature is verified. If it went well, uh, it returns true, and normally the application delivers the the product. So if you look at the comment of uh, of this class, you see uh, in small that the comment saying for a secure implementation, all of this code should be implemented on a server that communicates with the application on the device. So in fact, we are looking at the example provided by Google, but they say be, be careful. Normally, you shouldn't do that if you want a secure implementation. So it's a, it's a little bit strange. If you look deeper on the uh, Google documentation, they tell you, yes, in fact, we recommend to validate the purchase on the server controlled by the developer. Uh, however, uh, if you can't, you can still perform a less secure validation within your app. It's allowed. Uh, with the design uh, provided by, by Google. But they warn you on the warning, this form of, ver of verification is not truly secure because it requires to bundle purchase verification logic within your app. So it means if someone reverse engineer your application, you're screwed. So let's have a look at some uh, known vulnerabilities already uh, found on this API. In fact, in 2013, Dominic Schurman found already two vulnerabilities on, uh, on, this, uh, on this API. So he disclosed the bug to Google. It was on the All of the Fame at, uh, at this time. Yes, at this time, Bug Booty, uh, it was not very popular, so he didn't get uh, any, any money for that. 
but he developed a proof of concept called the Billing Hack uh, to, uh, to perform the, uh, to exploit, sorry, the, the vulnerabilities found. So let's, let's have a look at the first one. <coughs> so in fact, as, you, as I said before, to start a payment, you need to send a message, which is in the Android world means an intent, to the, to the Google Play app to initiate the process payment. In fact, in this, at this time, he found that if a malicious application defined in this Android manifest uh, specific filter for, for the message sent by, uh, by the application with a high priority, so it means you are telling the system, okay, if you send this kind of message, I want to be the first in priority to receive it and to, to, manage, uh, to manage it. So in fact, it means you can impersonate the Google Play app. So that was the first, uh, first vulnerability found. Then, when you look at the signature verification method uh, given by, by Google, he found that, in fact, if you return a, an empty signature, you can see on this one, in fact, uh, the function always returns true. Because the first test is, if not empty, made the verification. In, uh, in the other case, if uh, the signature is empty, no verification is made, and by default, the function returns true. So to sum up, you can just create a malicious app at this time and set uh, an intent filter with a high priority to impersonate the Google Play app, return an empty signature, and that's all. You can bypass the payment. So of course, Google modified this. For the first one, it's simple. They say, OK, for now, uh, for the intent, you need to specify specifically that we need to use, uh, you need to send, sorry, this message to the Google Play app. So on the Android world, the package name of the Google Play app is com.android.vending. So now each uh, Android application wanting to perform in-app payments need to implement this specific line. You can see service intent.set package and specify com.android.vending. Okay. That, so that's for the first one. Okay, so now we are sending the message directly to Google uh, app, Google Play, sorry, application. And for the second, uh, second uh, issue, it's easy. They just modify the verify process uh, method, and by default, it's returning false, whatever, uh, whatever, even if the signature is empty. So that's cool. So now the question is. Can we remove a client-side issue using a client-side fix? Spoiler alert, no. In fact, you can still bypass the payment, even with those, uh, those fixes. Because if your Android application is still performing uh, local validation for the payment, you can still modify the application to set, uh, this, uh, set the package to, a package you, to an, uh, an application you control and modify the verify process method to always return true, if you want. So in fact, the main, the main problem, the, the first point is, is simple to, to automate and to, and to do. Uh, it's just the second one. You ne just need to find the logic uh, to, for the verification process and uh, just to modify this, this, uh, this logic. So hacking steps, if you want to do that, it's pretty simple. Use the billing hack uh, provided by Dominic. Uh, the proof of concept uh, is still available on, uh, on GitHub. You, uh, you have it on my slides on the reference at the end. You decompile the application, for instance, with APK tool. You modify the bytecode to replace the package with, uh, with a billing hack uh, uh, application. You modify the signature validation to return always true, recompile the application, install it new uh, in your device, and that's it. So now let's have a look at some uh, vulnerable application. For the first one, uh, I tried on Doodle Jump. Uh, in 2015, it was uh, one of the b famous games on uh, the Android uh, platform. Uh, if you don't know this game, you just have to jump the higher possible to, 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 win, uh, to win the game. Uh, so in this game, you can buy kind of costumes. 
uh, but to buy costumes, in fact, you need candies. So the only item you can buy is candies. If you look at the code of, uh, of the Google uh, of the Doodle Jump, sorry, application, in fact, it's like the, it's a copy paste from the from the uh, Android do documentation. So they said well, uh, they they set it well, saying the set package to the Google Play app. So now it's mandatory, so they can do uh, another way. So on the bytecode, it's easy to replace just a string com.android.vending by org.billingHack. Okay, so no problem for that. And if you look at the Java code, yes, the verify purchase is here. So the verification is performed locally. So no issue. Uh, on the bytecode, you just modify uh, the v0 register here to, uh, to, b to be set to 1, which it means true on bytecode uh, byte world. So doing that, you just have uh, to recompile the application and to, to use it and to profit. Just a quick demo to, to show you I'm not, I'm, not, uh, I'm not cheating. In fact, yes, in, in sort of I'm cheating, but not for the demo. Okay, so you see I'm uh, going to launch yeah. do the jump. So sorry, it's in French, but I'm going to make the translation. So if you look it, if you look here, you have the magazine, which is a shop in English. Okay, and so you can select uh, a character. So the first ones are uh, are free, but for instance, this one, you need to have one thousand candies to play with it, and you can see I have zero candies at the moment. Okay, so let's select one. I'm going to choose the pumpkin one because uh, I like it. Okay, so you don't see it, but I'm going to click on buy. And so now it's telling me, hey, you need more candy. Of course, I have zero candies. So I have three options. I can watch a video to obtain 200 candies, but it's not enough. I can buy 1,000 or 10,000. Okay. So on this example, I'm going to be reasonable. I'm going to click only on 1,000 candies. And you'll see a pop-up, but it will not be the Google Play pop-up, we, we can say, but the billing hack pop-up telling me uh, if I want to buy this item. So yeah, the pop-up is just for purpo uh, demo purposes. Okay, so you see the pop-up. Do you want to get this item for free? For sure. I'm here for that. And uh, yes, sorry. And so yes, now you can see I have 1,000 candies. So that's cool. I can by this character. So that's a Doodle Jump application asking for that, if I'm sure if I want to play with Popkin. And now they are not asking money anymore. I mean, candies in this case, and I can play with it. OK. So that's it for uh, Doodle Jump. So you can see Doodle Jump is like the one on one uh, in app uh, payment validation. They are only using the documentation and don't thinking about how to, to secure the, the payment process. Let's have a look to another example Snoopy Pop. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's, it's a funny game. It's, it's pretty similar to Bubble Witch if you, if you know it. In fact, it's not similar, it's the same. But it was with, uh, you are playing with Snoopy. It's the only difference. Uh, in this game, you can buy coins uh, and leaves, as you can see on, on the right. So on this case, Snoopy Pop, they are using the Unity library. Uh, I guess if you play a lot, uh, or not a lot, but if you play video games, you can uh, have heard about this library, because it's, they are, they, it's used for uh, uh, graphics. And in this library, they are offering kind of an interface also for the Google Play billing. If you look at the documentation, they say, okay, we have two ways to, to handle the, the payment. 
uh, the validation, sorry, you can do it locally or remotely. Cool. But if you look at the remote validation, you can see, ah, in fact, Unity does not offer support for server-side validation. Ah, too bad. So, in fact, uh, Unity, e in the last versions, are uh, mostly developed in the mono.net, and so uh, those DLLs are embedded on the Android application. If you look on the assets directory of the Android application, at some point, on the manage uh, subdirectory, you find a lot of DLLs and one interesting called security.dll. And uh, because it's .NET, uh, it's cool because we can decompile it easily uh, without uh, debugging uh, assembly code uh, for hours. And if you look at this uh, DLL, there is a function called validate uh, with the same purpose of the verify purchase method I showed you before which validates the signature of the purchase. So, we can use, for instance, uh, a well-known tool called DNS, DNSPy, which is a .NET decompiler. So we can obtain the C-sharp code uh, without any issue. And in red here, you can see that if the um, signature verification is not good, uh, an exception is thrown uh, called invalid signature exception. And so the payment is not done. OK, so no problem. With DNSPy, we can decompile, but we can also modify the DLL uh, without any issue. So just remove the lines uh, throwing the exception, recompile the DLL, and uh, embed it in your application, and you can profit. So another demo, just to prove I'm not cheating. So yes, I can show you quickly uh, DNSPy. So here, it's the security uh, DLL open, decompiled. Uh, on the Google Play Validator class, we find the validate method here. And here you can see, yes, if, uh, if flag up, we, uh, we return an exception. So just select the lines, edit. Normally, if I'm not wrong, yeah, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, that's okay. So now we don't have any more the lines uh, throwing uh, an error if the payment is not done. And so, after repackaging your application, have my emulator. I, I hope you see well. So of course you launch Billing Hack to impersonate the Google Play uh, app. Running in background, you launch Snoopy Pop. Okay, you already see I have a lot of coins, and my lives are full. Ah, I don't have connect. Ah, okay, fail. Okay, demo gods are not with me today. I forgot to set up internet. <laughs> you need the uh, internet to to uh, to make p payments. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm going to set internet uh, and I'm going back to this to this demo. Sorry about that. Okay, so the last one is um, Fruit Ninja, uh, which is a famous game also. More than one, uh, 100 million of downloads. And so this one is more, uh, we can say more secure, because they use Java native interface. So if you don't know what is Java native interface, in fact, in Android application, you can embed the native code. It means you can embed, in fact, shared li libraries. Usually, the, those libraries are written in, uh, in C or C++. And so the idea is from your Java code, you can call uh, methods uh, on this shared library. So those functions are uh, pretty easy to, to find on the Java code, because you just have the definition of the method, and the native keyword is used. So it means if you want to, to, to see the implementation of this method, you need to reverse engineer the shared library. 
And in the case of Fruit Ninja, uh, all the sensitive functions for the payment are uh, handled uh, by the shared li library. In fact, you can see here the purchase result native in the middle is the one uh, performing the validation of, uh, of the payment. So I found the shared library. It's pretty easy. Uh, <laughs> you need to be a good uh, reverse engineer. I tried. Uh, I failed because it was time consuming. And uh, as I said, I'm not really skilled for, for reverse engineering. But at some point, I say, OK, let's try it and uh, see if, uh, if it works. And uh, finally, it appears that uh, I don't know what they are doing in the uh, shared library, but the signature validation is poorly made. And so you can also bypass uh, the payment. So normally, if I have internet access, yes, it seems OK. I can show you. So first, we do the jump. Oh, you kidding me? You are lucky you don't have the sound, so don't complain. Oh, my internet connection is not enough. Okay, let's try with Fruit Ninja. Okay. So yes, you can uh, on Fruit Ninja you can buy some golden apples and some stars. And so normally, let's try with golden apples. Just two hundred and fifty. Okay, I don't know why there is a bug with uh, the screen. It comes black, but at the end you can see that it's working. And it is the same. Oh. Okay, it doesn't like it. Okay. OK, and so it works. Let's try again just to be sure with no people. Oh. Oh. OK. OK, no, it doesn't want I don't know why. Okay. Sorry about that. So that's all for for the vulnerable application. So let's let's go to the the conclusion. <coughs> so as I tried to show you, developers use different techniques to protect the Google Play billing payment. So sometimes they tried to use obfuscation from what I, f I see on the different Android application I tested. Uh, shared library, you see some shared libraries in .NET and other ones uh, on, uh, using native code. And sometimes nothing at all, like uh, Doodle Jump, where it, there is no, no improvement in, uh, in security. But uh, yes, unfortunately, if the signature uh, validation is only performed locally inside your application, you have uh, you have no way to to protect the the, the payment. 
So I, I, I tested roughly more than uh, 40 apps. Uh, 25 apps were vulnerable. I was able to bypass payments. I can show you all the, the Android apps I, I found because uh, some of them uh, didn't respond at all on I, I, my solicitation. Uh, I find only five apps uh, using an external endpoint to, to perform additional check uh, regarding the payment. Uh, all the applications I show you, I contacted the editors, I contacted Fruit Ninja, uh, the Snoopy Pop, and uh, also uh, Doodle Jump. Uh, Doodle Jump, I, got, I never got an answer. Fruit Ninja, they told me, well, yes, we are going to fix it. Uh, still not, but there are some updates, but still not uh, fixing this uh, particular issue. And uh, Snoopy Pop, uh, no answer also at all. If you compare the billing, uh, the Google Play billing library, uh, you can see that uh, Google, wa uh, Google is the only one providing a design where the allowing the local validation. If you look at the Amazon in-app purchase or Samsung, for instance, in-app purchase, uh, you can see on the doc documentation that the requirement is to use a server to validate the payment and to retrieve the product you are uh, selling. Okay, so I just want to thank Checkmarks for the support on this project. And uh, yes, I think we have plenty of time for questions if you have some. <laughs> yeah, in fact, um, what I found, uh, for instance, there is a newspaper uh, application in fact, when you made the payment, I was able to bypass it. But at some point, because you need an account to be authenticated, to retrieve the magazines, or uh, to obtain uh, uh, the access uh, premium uh, feature, premium access, sorry. Uh, at some point, they make the, the, the server is making a kind of a request to the Google backend to be sure that you made the payment. So even if you bypass it locally, at some point, there is another check to be sure, okay, you, you are a premium user. Ah, in fact, it doesn't appear you have paid on uh, on the Google backend, so we are not going to accept. Well, okay. Uh, so the technique process you demonstrate with Doodle. Uh, so I guess is Doodle Jump. Is it the same used by apps like uh, Lucky Patcher? Yes, in fact, it's the same because uh, Lucky Patcher is also based on uh, the work from uh, Dominic Schurman. So in fact, if you look at uh, the Lucky Patcher application. Uh, it's 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 based on the same work uh, as uh, as Dominic, so it's based on the billing hack uh, application. So, sort of Lucky Patcher is just an improvement of the billing app uh, application. Uh, did, did any of the application ban you? Uh, at the moment, uh, yeah, I didn't uh, I didn't get this uh, this point of uh, banishment. I mean. Uh, I used through Ninja for several uh, times and uh, I didn't get banished. But I don't think uh, they can banish me because uh, if you are not using, uh, sometimes applications are asking you to use your Google account to s save your um, your status. If you didn't uh, don't um, don't connect, you can still use the application and uh, make payments. So I, I don't see any, mean, any means to to banish me uh, on the game. Thank <laughs> you.